Uh, yeah, on, I, as a pitch for something that I'm working on, uh, we're hoping to kick off a research project that simply looks at the terms of, terms of use of health apps and does a, a kind of meta-analysis and says, okay, here, here are all the health apps, here's, here's the spreadsheet. What have you handed off to others in terms of information when you, when you, you, you hit acceptance and then look through there to see if in terms of personal privacy and the integrity of your data and so forth, that there's some, some versions of that, those permissions that are better than others. And then, you know, and make that information broadly available so that people say, I like this, I don't like that, I'm going to yell at that app provider, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to my member of provincial parliament for OHIP in Ontario or federal parliament because they should be collaborating, they're putting money, our tax dollars into this. Um, it's, you know, one of the things here is to keep stirring the pot with these issues in it so that kind of knowledge boils to the top and awareness boils to the top. Uh, too much of what's going on now, if you listen to the radio or TV, is just somebody having a firmly held opinion about where it should go. Well, it's not a time to have firmly held opinions about where it should go. It's a time to have firmly held opinions about what the principles are that we want to uphold. And then work from those principles to what should we be doing given the context now and five years from now and so forth. Uh, uh, you know, the big growth, for example, in health is, is now it's health apps. Right. But with the, with the Internet of Things, it's going to be medical devices that are connected to the Internet. Right. Well, that opens a whole other area, this data sphere around the individual that may be linked to somebody's refrigerator and, and, and uh, stove, where they collect those data, the data from those two sources is compared with this medical data uh, that provides information for commercial users or for healthcare providers. The good one is to get this stuff pulled together so that my information is mine and is shared with my health providers. The bad one is that my information isn't mine and it's being shared by a bunch of people who may be commercial interests uh, with whom I don't want, want them to have that information. Uh, one other thing, uh, changing the tone a bit. On issues of things like net, net neutrality, which in Canada in some cases seems to take the form of ISPs and internet information suppliers, the people that bring the pipes into the houses, increasingly owning almost in an oligopoly the media companies in yep. Canada. Uh, between right now Rogers, Bell, and Telus, they own like most of the major television stations, right. radio stations, whatever. To the point where we're now seeing ads that certain stations, well, you can't get this on your provider. You got to come to ours. Mm -hmm. Is this a problem that we need to deal with at a policy issue, and is it a significant problem in your opinion? It's a policy issue, but how we deal with it is is unclear. Um, I like to, as an example, I like to use the control that the Catholic Church had over social processes in Quebec prior to the Silent Revolution. The Silent Revolution took place not because the church did anything, the population simply walked away from a big chunk of the control that the church had over the population. So I think what's going to happen here is that the, these media conglomerates that are increasingly saying, here's access to the bandwidth and we're packaging it with this and you can't get that if you're with us. That people are going to find ways to get that anyhow. Say we don't want that package. The real growth, it, uh, and this is what's happening in, in it happened, it's happened in Egypt with, and that's not over yet. It's happening at the moment in Iran. It's happening at the moment in China and that's what you've got hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, of bloggers, people sharing information, some good, some bad, some misleading, so forth. Well, we have to get sophisticated enough to, to glean through that stuff and, and find out you know, what's good and what's bad. That's part of becoming aware in these areas. It's no different from trying to have a good diet. Uh, so I think that the, the battle is not going to be 
there'll be a, an element of, of regulation saying, no, you can only be this big, you can't be that big, you can't own this if you've got that, so forth. That'll be happening up at the top, but the real change is going to take place at the bottom, where people are going to say, in my community, I get better information from these two blogs than I do from the national broadcasters in this or that or the other media channel or media conglomerate. Um, we'll be seeing that tested out, I'm just going to use an example, uh, a fairly good international media group is Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera bought some channel space in the US and they're going to mount a US channel, but they're trying to position it between MSN and Fox which they see as a market niche strategy in the US, but it walks away completely from how they built their reputation elsewhere. Okay, well that's their business dynamic. Whether it'll succeed or fail, I don't know. But that's what's taking place up here. But on the ground, people have a hunger for good information. So, you, so you, this is sounding like more of a revolution in journalism than anything else. Oh, there is a revolution in journalism coming, and there will be a a kind of representative structure. There will still be some you know, media organizations that have a reputation for doing it well, doing their homework and their due diligence and being on the cutting edge. Uh, but it'll be a bit like you know, the Catholic Church. It's still in Quebec. It just doesn't have the power it had 40 years ago. And it lost that power in a decade. You know, the roots of losing it go back much, much deeper, but we're talking about something that's been around for 2,000 years. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, you know, it's kind of like Moore's Law in, in technology. I mean, this is 18 months in this, in this environment, and we're, it's a new context. It's a new set of, of opportunities and challenges. But they all go back to those basic principles. You know, what kind of civil society do, do we want? What kind of governance do we want? What mix of control and, uh, and incentives? what to, me as an individual, me as a family, me as a community, me as a worker in this area, what are the issues that I should be worrying about there? Well, in the past, in, you know, the past being 10 years ago, a lot of those were small issues. In the next 10 years, they're going to be big issues. Big issues. But given that you mentioned Moore's Law, isn't the big challenge going to be just keeping up with it? Uh, it's, like, it's like riding a fast horse. You know, uh, but keeping up with it, if you've got the principles in place, if you're beginning to say, okay, there are going to be 5,000 new health apps, but we now have a way of evaluating what a health app does in terms of providing you with a service and, and allowing the, uh, the invasion of the data snatchers. That you know, you say, oh, I've got all this great information. Well, this case from Belgium, I got all this great information on my cardio. What happens when I, I'm commuting and going to work and so forth and so on? And then you get, yeah, you, know, you call your travel agent and they go, your your travel insurance has been denied, and you've got no recourse, zero. You fly without travel insurance, or you don't fly. You know, and, and you didn't you didn't know you were in those negotiations with with the companies that would provide travel insurance. And then the other travel insurance company says we're prepared to ignore that. Their stockholders are going to say, you know, you can't ignore that. Maybe they know something you don't know. So it's going to, it, the, these things are going to churn to the surface now. And they're going to churn to the surface in a way in which the individual who thought they had no stake in this discovers they have a, a real stake at the moment. So there's a big challenge in making sure people understand they have that stake. Oh, yeah. yeah. You have an internet-enabled refrigerator that's reminding you that you need milk or eggs or whatever. Well, maybe it's telling your health insurance company what your diet is, too. Maybe that's good. Maybe it's bad. The new monitoring, the, the live monitoring of automobiles is now taking place in the US, and it, it's easy to do with OnStar and so forth. Um, the carrot is, if we can monitor your driving behavior, we can offer you a better rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also, we may pick up a whole lot of information there that's of use to somebody else. Right? It's already being used wholesale now in divorce cases because the GPS things go, you were supposed to be going to the squash court every afternoon, but you keep going to that cheap hotel. Uh, 
yeah, so right. just being aware of what that data sphere is around the individual or the, the, the abode and so forth, and who has access to it under what terms. That's, I'm more worried about that than I am NSA in the US spying on my phone calls or my email. Because this other stuff is real-time data, and it's being archived. It's not, a, it's not like a, a closed-circuit TV camera that keeps the last 30 minutes and throws the rest away. It's being archived. OK, is there anything else, any other loose ends I may have no, missed, no, or anything no, else you wanted to no. talk about? No, we have. Uh, You've covered a lot of ground. No, no, no. It's a, you know, I mean, it's a fascinating time. I just tongue in cheek actually for something with uh, uh, Klaus. I used the phrase uh, the the internet. I can has to figure out what its future is in the future of the future. <laughs>